Welcome to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. I'm Tori Mystic, here with my dogs, Lucy and Bert. Together, we're interviewing cool, creative women entrepreneurs in the pet industry. Do you dream of working alongside your dog? Then sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode to find the inspiration and resources that will help you grow your own dog-inspired business. In this episode, we're not just talking about products, sales, or marketing. We're talking about how to make people's and pets' lives better. I absolutely love that today's guest said that one of her favorite resources is the dog park. I know that I get most of my news, shopping tips, recipes, and dog momming advice from my park friends. So that advice is on point and so authentic. You're going to love this conversation, so let's just dive right into it. Colette Bunton is the CEO of Whistle, the San Francisco tech company making pet wearables that improve the lives of our pets and help us stay always connected to them. Before Whistle, Colette led successful consumer electronic teams at Roku, a streaming platform and smart TV company. She has over 20 years experience growing brands and products at Seagate, Cisco, Logitech, and more. Colette's specialty is her ability to focus on the consumer and bring user delights to market through innovative new products. Hi, Colette. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Tori. How are you? I'm great. Good. I'm so excited to learn about you and um, learn why you decided to sort of venture into the pet world after um, working in kind of more traditional technology for so many years. Um, Do you want to just dive in and kind of tell us about that journey? Sure, absolutely. Well, I guess the first thing is, is I don't actually see it being that different, right? The pet world is just part of your world and your whole world is connected. So um, it's just another thing that is connected in my everyday life. Um, I am very pet focused. Um, One of the things when I started talking to Whistle that they found interesting is that I was a Whistle user. So when they called and said, have you heard about this company? I was like, yep. I have one on my dog's neck right now and told them all about how I use it and you know how it makes sense day in day out um, so for me it was just supernatural um, you know I've had pets all of my life um, I am they're they're my kids and so you know this just made total sense as far as where to go next and have you discovered that there's a difference from kind of being a passionate dog mom, like you mm-hmm. have been for your whole life, to uh-huh. sort of being the CEO of a, of a brand that sells products for, for dog moms and for pets? Is there um, kind of a big difference in how you think about the product? Well, I think, you know, one of the things for anybody who's developing a product is you don't develop a product just for you. You have to actually go out and reach out and talk to lots of people to understand what, um, you know, the market needs versus just what my personal needs are. I would say one of the biggest things for me was just all of the information and all of the different um different experiences that are available in the pet space. Um, I did not have all of those or experience all of those just being a pet mom myself. And what it occurred to me in that is just how um, confusing it can be if you, if you, you know, especially if you're new to being a pet parent, just like if you're new to being any kind of a parent, um, you want to do the best you can. And the trick is being able to get good information, um, being able to, um, and to be able to apply that. And so I think for me, it became less about um, what did I need and more about understanding there's so many opportunities. What are ones that we should be bringing to our customers? I love that. So, so tell us a little bit about Whistle. I've looked into it and seen some of the impressive features, but you know, what makes it special? What, what is so cool about Whistle? Well, it's funny. Whistle started off and, you know, where we're the strongest, where if people know us, know us the most is from um, really focusing on one single goal, which is to be able to help lost pets be found and um, their parents be able to find them quickly. So we very much um, are secured in safety. Um, That's part of the reason why I had it on my dog is um, we had 
lost our dog at the park, mm -hmm. and uh, my husband had, so it wasn't, it was me, it was bad pain. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and he called me and he's like, turn on that microchip. And so being not very savvy um, on the technology, you know, I, was, I called um, and um, got to my vet. My vet said, yeah, that's not how it works. What, how a microchip works is once your dog gets found, they scan it and they can call you, right? Then all the information's on there. But as far as actually tracking down where Donovan, my husband's dog was, um, he was like, you, you do it the old fashioned way. You're, we're standing outside and calling and, you know, chasing around trying to figure out where he was. Um, luckily, he was at home when my husband finally got back, you know, went, went home to get, you know, the car and, um, and um, Donovan had made his way home. And so then we started looking at how to solve the real problem, which was, um, you know, how to find him as opposed to once he got found, how to get him connected to us. Right. Sort of working proactively instead of um, exactly. reactively. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so that's how we got to whistle. So in answer to your question, though, from, you know, from that key proposition of what we do for, you know, thousands of people today, what we, we now are looking at doing is how can we expand other ways that we can make it easier for people to take care of their pets the way that they really intend to. So, you know, and this is really about looking at the data and saying, okay, you know, um, people are interested in their own health and people are interested in their pet's health, obviously, um, because you want to be a good pet parent. So we, you know, have information about what, what they do, where they are, right, because we're tracking. So how much they run, how many minutes of activity they have, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, that's nice to know, but as far as taking care of your pet, then the question is, is how do you take that information into something that you can do to be a better pet parent? And so from there, we're looking at, uh, we're doing things like encouraging you to be able to get, you know, a certain amount of activity. And it's different if you have a husky versus you have a chihuahua like we were talking about earlier. Right, um, right. And, and so being able to first be able to say your husky needs this much activity um, and then be able to measure because we can, you know, and he's gotten this much activity. So why don't you go out and walk him for another 20 minutes? And that is, you know, one of the ways that we're expanding beyond the safety to being able to help with healthy lifestyle. Um, and also, you know, by that you get what I, what I love about it is then you also get the additional benefit for the family, right? So it is, you know, you go out and walk your dog. You probably wouldn't have walked otherwise. Or in be even better cases, we've had conversations with people where they've said, I can't get my kid outside and away from the TV, but they will go out and walk to be able to get Murphy their extra badge for the day to say that they made their goals. And right. so that's the kind of thing that we're looking at that, you know, we love is how to be able to affect more parts of the, um, of the pet's life and frankly, more parts of the family's life. Right, improving everyone's experience together, and I think that um, you know the the main goal that they're trying to get to, you know, if they're if people are struggling to get out, is to you know tick off the boxes and get to the milestone that the app is is telling them to get to. But then there's so many secondary benefits because once you get out there and you start walking, it's easier to keep walking, and um, you know your dog might do something really cute that just makes you smile and feel better, and um, you know the benefits are like a hundredfold. Well, and to that point, so there is the you know the benefit of just the love of your dog and being outside and you know, all the cute things they do that make us happy every day. You know, so that's the you know why we have. Um, pets in our families is there's just this love that comes from it but one of the other things that I'm particularly passionate about is by doing that actually it helps you build community so outside of your family it you know you meet people in your neighborhood that's one of the challenges we have in California is you know people are out but they don't know their neighbors and by you know going out and walking your dog you actually meet the people on your street and it's really important for people who um, are kind of shy or you know, older people who wouldn't get out otherwise, it gives you an excuse to be able to get out, but also the dog and it gives you, um, enables people to have a way of being able to connect with you because everybody likes dogs, right? Yeah, they're and like so the best like, hey. icebreaker that you could ever have. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so, you know, that's, that's what makes me so excited and so passionate about 
about you know being a pet parent is all of these benefits that they bring to you and bring to you in and the people in your neighborhood i guess i so, one Mr. million Walters, percent yeah. agree with you <laughs> this is you're 100 percent speaking to me right now because um i work from home and i was i was telling you before we hit record that for many years i would go like days without talking to other people <laughs> Um, which is one of the reasons why I love the podcast, but that's also um, why I appreciate my dog so much because we have to get out. I have mm -hmm. my little squad of friends at um, several different dog parks, depending on mm -hmm. where we decide to go each day. And, and I know a lot about these people. We never really hang out outside of the park, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we, we spend, you know, an hour every day together, which is really amazing. I would never do that without my dogs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you know, we're, we're on the same page there. <laughs> totally. Um, so I think one of the wonderful things like you, you've been mentioning is your dedication to um, dogs health. And I think just like the health of, of the people who are caring for them. And um, I think one of the things that sets Whistle apart is some of the partnerships that you have created. For example, right now you're partnering with Banfield um, mm -hmm. and you're doing something called the Pet Insight Project. Can you tell yes. us? A little bit what that's about well this is one of the ways that whistle is blessed in that we're part of Mars pet care and so the first part of the you know the blessings that come along with that is that um, Mars is a purpose-built company so you know we are um, you know we're all about better care for the pets who take care of us and so I love the mutuality and the synergy that goes into it and I love that it's part I'm part of a company a larger company that has the same values that I have um, and based off of that um, one of the companies within the Mars Pet Care family is Banfield Veterinarian Hospitals and so as we were looking at different ways of being able to provide better health care for um, our, our, our better care in general you know obviously there's lots of ways that you do that as we talked about with partnerships and what better partner can you have than a vet and so and it's nice that there's one in the family already and so what we did with um, Mars um, Banfield is we paired up with them to get um, give them 30,000 fits which is one of our products whistle fits and with that they would share with us um, what was going on with the dogs and their medical records in that what we were able to do is take the information of what's going on with the dog and we can measure things like if the dog is scratching if the dog is drinking if the dog is sleeping if the dogs running etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's all these things based off of as my engineers hate me to say it the jiggle that's going on on the collar we can tell <laughs> all kinds of things that's going on with the dog and then what we're doing through um, machine learning is then to say okay based off of the jiggles can you tell that and videos that people sent in the, the, we call them citizen scientists all these videos that people sent in and they said you know we said send us a video of when your dog is drinking send us a video of when your dog is scratching and so matching up the information that all of these people were willing to share with their um, share with us videos etc and the jiggles we were able to say oh this dog is scratching and he's scratching a lot and then he got um, treated by the vet and then his scratching went down and so then we're able to now start seeing some patterns so that we can start um, sharing with whistle users hey you're, we're starting to see this pattern. You may want to check into, is it seasonal allergies and some things you could do at home or whether it's getting better or getting worse. And our, our feeling there is really about empowering the pet parent with information. They can then do whatever they want to do with it, but at least there's a voice for the dog that's saying, hey, something's going on with me, I'm scratching more. And then the pet parent can do what they think is best for taking care of their, their dog. And that's all of that research is something we couldn't do if we didn't have a great partner and frankly a great partner like Banfield that gave us the back end of the information of what was happening. That is amazing. I wish you could see my face right now because my <laughs> eyes are like so huge. Cause I, that is really, really cool. I, it kind of makes me think, you know, I spend a lot of time in Facebook groups of other dog moms and you see so many people asking like, hey, my dog is doing this. Like, has anyone else's dog done this? Really? Or like, what should I do if they're doing that? Um, and what you've done is actually applied science and technology to yes. that kind of crowdsourcing. Um, it's really amazing. 
Yeah, and you know, and the goal is to be able to have the dog uncomfortable for a shorter period of time, right? Because now you you have a voice to it. The the pet parent to be empowered to be able to say, okay, now what can I do? Right? We were talking about having information be actionable. And frankly, you know, pet being a pet parent can be expensive. And if you catch some of these things early it's less so. And, you know, and if you do preventative maintenance on, you know, like whatever for their ears or, you know, there's lots of different things that there's um, preventative maintenance with the dogs, then, you know, then you don't have this, this big bill at the end. You're able to just have, like we do with ourselves, just kind of constantly be taking care of ourselves. And it, it makes everybody's life happier. Yeah. My, um, one of my dogs, Lucy, she, She's had kind of a history with hot spots and those, when those get out of control, they grow like wildfire and um, they really spread and they make her really uncomfortable and it adds up in the vet bills and everything. And if that's something we could detect sooner, which I do my best to do, but um, I can't quite read her mind yet. (laughs) Um, But we we try to sort of nip it in the bud as, as quickly as we can, but even something little like that, when it, when it, gets out of hand and you don't deal with it immediately, it can really get expensive and also be painful. Well, and our dogs are lucky because we're home with them a lot, but you know, not everybody's dogs are either. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to say, you know, I'm uh, during the day when you're, when they're, they're home by themselves for them, for somebody to be able to know that they're scratching because they can't see it like you and I can, because we're with our dogs all the time is really powerful. Absolutely. Sorry to interrupt the interview, but I would love to see what you're doing while you catch up with the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. Take a screenshot of this episode in your podcast player or snap a selfie with your earbuds in. Bonus points if it's on a dog walk and share it to your Instagram stories tagging me at tmystic. I'll keep an eye out for mentions and I would love to give you a shout out from my own account. Okay, now back to the episode. So, so a lot of the people who listen to this show are entrepreneurs and, um, I just wanted to see if we could find a way to sort of inspire them to pursue some kind of a partnership, obviously partnering with Banfield, you know, you're lucky that it's in the same family of companies. Um, and that's a huge partnership, but do you have any kind of recommendations or advice on someone who wants to pursue a partnership with another brand, um, no matter, you know, what kind of area it's in? Well, there's there's a couple things, and I'm going to answer um, your your real question in a second. But I also wanted to talk a little one more thing that um, we could talk about in the family is I belong to a portion of the family that's um, under the umbrella of kinship. And what kinship does is it takes companies like me, um, like Wisdom Health, which we had talked about before mm-hmm. we started recording 23 and Me of Dogs. Although I guess it should be 37 um, and Me of Dogs. <laughs> And, um, and also, you know, other um, startup companies, because we came in as a startup company into Mars. Um, we have a incubator called um, Leap, and um, Leap is, works with small companies, and some of they're not, they're all pet care, but it could be food, it could be financial, there's lots of different, we're looking for entrepreneurs to be able to be part of our cohorts for that, and, um, you know, we give lots of information and, and support. Um, we also have a venture business um, that is called um, Companion Ventures um, Fund, and so that is, you know, more of a traditional um, um, so, you know, financial support, mm-hmm. but I, I would encourage people to look at what we're doing in the leap side. We are doing, um, um, entrepreneur, um, support both in, um, information, marketing, et cetera. There's lots of ways that you could get involved with us from there. So oh, that's that sounds idea. wonderful. Well, tell yeah, us really quickly, where does someone go to find out about that? So the easiest place to go to that, I think, would be kinship.co, okay. um, but you should be able to find it um, off of the, the Mars Pet Care as well, but pin, kinship.co is your best bet. Great. And then, um, you know, and then you would find me because I'm one of the mentors in that group, so I'd be happy to, you know, be able to talk to people and see how I can help them um, realize what their potential in their business. Awesome. Um, and, and I would say as far as partnerships, um, just like in life, 
um, the only way partnerships work is if there's mutuality, right? So um, the only reason why the Banfield one worked for us is because it made sense. They were trying to take better care of potential, potential um, particular diseases, and we were able to give them information. And so when I'm looking at working with a, um, a fresh food dog company, dog food company, mm-hmm. you know, we're looking at how that helps my goal of making dogs healthier. And what does that do as far as activity and um, the ways that um, potentially it helps with fitness. And so in, like everything else in life, the short answer is it's about it being a mutually benefit, beneficial behavior, um, partnership. Yeah. Well, that's really great insight because I think a lot of times um, – as a small, you know, startup or just a solopreneur, um, it can be intimidating to to think about who you're going to approach, or um, it can be tempting also to try and approach brands where you think you're going to get so much out of it. But it's important to think about um, what you're both going to get out of it. Yeah, because you really want it to be long term, right? And so, for it to be long term, it has to make sense, right? So um, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, I I heard that you recently shared a personal story at the summit on human isolation and companion animals that was hosted by Habri and Mars Pet Care. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about that story and um, why you think understanding the human animal bond is so important? Yeah. So, I mean, from what we've been talking about so far, you could tell that I'm all about this, this relationship, this pairing that we have and how it affects um, both us and the overall community. The story that I told at Habri was around um, my, my husband's relationship with his dog. And there's a couple of big things out of it. One is we originally um, got Donovan, the dog that got lost, um, from my husband because he had a heart attack. And one of the big issues with um, people who have heart attacks and have surgery is that they don't really, um, you know, the recovery is the biggest issue. And so our, um, our surgeon told us, you know, the biggest worry that he has for people is that afterwards they become, in quote, cardiac cripples. And, you know, because people become afraid to go out and exercise, people, you know, it, it becomes a real issue. They, and it, it's a downward spiral. Well, and depression is very common after heart exactly. surgery as well. Mm-hmm. That as well. And so we got Donovan because I knew my husband wouldn't go out and walk on his own. So, um, but Donovan, he would go out and walk his dog, just like I had talked about Cammie and, and um, her dog Murphy. And so that was the original reason for getting um, Donovan. And it actually worked. And he, my husband left while we've been talking to go and walk Donovan again. Um, <laughs> and, and um, but it also had some additional benefits in that my, my husband was, is a, a veteran and um, had PTSD or has PTSD. Mm-hmm. And to your point, there's depression that goes along with that. There's isolation that goes along with that. There's lots of things that go on with um, trusting and, and putting yourself out there for people. And as we had talked about the um, dog park and the friends that he has at the dog park and frankly, just meeting people at, um, you know, on the street and we go to certain restaurants that are dog friendly restaurants and it has opened up the world and opened up the community to them. And so um, Habri is the Human Animal um, Bond Research Institute. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I believe in what they're doing because, you know, it is all the ways that the human animal bond really make a difference in so many ways in our lives. And so that was the story that I shared and um, how it, you know, personally I was able to see what they were doing there. Well, I think sharing personal stories like that just, it goes to show, um, you know, what a difference we're all making just by working in the pet industry. You know, anything that you do that's enabling people to spend more time with pets and and make pets happier, it's not just impacting those people and those pets, but it impacts the whole world. Exactly. And that's why I love things like restaurants that have patios, Mm -hmm. right? Because then you're able to have your dog you know, go to, go to lunch with you and, you know, you get to meet other people because of it. It's just, um, it's, we go to this one restaurant stacks literally every week because we've now that's become part of our family and, um, they have an outside dog, um, part of the restaurant and that's why we go there and we just love the people there. And it just, you know, it it is so, so enriching in so many ways. Yeah. I was just, um, working with a, 
a new store that opened up in our area and I, I stopped in with my dog and to see it. And I asked them, I said, are you, is this a dog friendly store? Are you going to allow dogs all the time? And they're like, Oh, I don't know. We have to, we have to check. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, you're in an urban area and, um, you know, exactly. people are walking around with their dogs and uh, it makes a lot of sense to enable them to, you know, bring their dogs. And I think you'll, you know, not only yeah. get more people in the door, but it's just like a wonderful, nice thing to do. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we like dog people, so. <laughs> so um, tell us, you, you were telling me a little bit about your, your master mutt. <laughs> Super mutt that you have. <laughs> Tell us about your dog who's with you right now. So, um, Monster is a mutt, mutt, mutt. Um, we were, you know, I thought he was a Karen Terrier. He looks like a black version of Toto with this big shock of white hair, kind of like Don King. <laughs> off the top of his head and so he got the name monster not because he's crazy but because he looked like a muppet from from sesame street and um monster adopted us he um was a barn dog where we live it's a little bit off on the outskirts of san jose and people um drop their dogs off in this area huh. and um monster came by to eat one day and then decided hmm this is a good place. And within a week he was in our bed and, um, is, uh, just, just a delight to have around because he was a straight, he is, you know, he's very sweet with all kinds of other dogs. He's great with kids. He's great with everybody. He's just the, my pride and joy and the crazy dog. But what, to, um, the thing that we were talking about is why well, I thought he was a Karen Terrier. He's not, he's, um, we did the wisdom panel. He's one third dachshund, um, and then he has poodle and plug and um, wire do uh, wire hair dachshund and um, all kinds of stuff in him. In fact, one whole section is so um, so dispersed that it's just question marks. It's like there's a bunch of you know sporting dog in him. So, but he's a good boy. <laughs> It reminds me, I think there was a scene in Parks and Rec, that show on NBC, mm -hmm. where they got a dog, and it was a mix or something, mm -hmm. and one of the characters said he's part amazing and part <laughs> fantastic, or something like that. <laughs> I'm going to change that. That's what I'm going to put on for, I'm going to get that kind of thing for Monster. That makes most so sense. <laughs> it's, and I love it that it's personality, so absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So um, before we have to sign off here today, um, would you mind sharing with us a couple of maybe like your top two or three tools or resources that you use to run this business on a day-to-day -day basis? <laughs> sure. So I guess from a technology point of view, my number one tool is the one that we're on right now, which is Zoom. Mm -hmm. I am on video conferencing all of the time because it's just a matter of how people communicate. And I love um, video conferencing because I like face-to-face. -face. It's um, really important just to be able to be connected from that point of view to me. Um, and then I guess after that, um, resources-wise, it really is um, your networks, right? And I, you know, I look at it as kind of my professional network when I don't know what to do, having people to call and just say, have you ever seen this before? Like we were talking about with so many other things. Mm -hmm. um, it's nobody, nobody's expected to have all the information. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, getting out there and being vulnerable enough to ask people for help. And then I guess the other one that we kind of talked about as well is the dog park and really seeing what real people want. And, um, you know, good products are not made in a vacuum. They're made by being out there in the world and figuring out what is a need and helping to solve it. And so, you know, I think my, my networks both professionally and personally are huge aspects of um, what drives me and drives my business because it is just part of my life. Right. And I, I think that's a great reminder that even as an entrepreneur or if someone's listening, if, even if they're working by themselves, you don't have to do it all by yourself. Um, there's so many people you can reach out to to ask for help. Well, um, Colette, thank you so much for, for talking with us and being on the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. Oh, I loved it. Thank you. It was really fun talking to you. Before we go, um, tell everyone where they can find you or Whistle online. Well, I think the easiest place is on whistle.com. So you could find out about us and I'm also on there as well. And then I'm always available on LinkedIn. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for listening to the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. You can fetch show notes at wearwagrepeat.com. If you like what you hear, please hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And until next time, we'll see you around the dog park.